Welcome to Generator, your view into the ever-evolving and vibrant art scene in Ireland today. In this instalment, we feature the fourth artist from Generator's second group show, musician and photographer Hugh McCabe. We take a first look at the new home of A4 Sounds, where we interrupt the hard work of Matt and Lisa to ask them about their future plans for the new space. First up, we meet with illustrator, designer and comic book artist Paddy Lynch at Irish-owned and one of Ireland's longest-running comic book stores, Subcity. My name's Paddy Lynch, I'm a comic book artist and writer and um, freelance designer and illustrator. I've been making comics for about five years now and I publish them myself. I have and have some of them published by the likes of the O'Brien Press. I've put out two issues so far of um, a series called Last Bus, which, is, which was kind of was the first thing that I actually put out and inspired kind of by the great um, like one-man anthologies of like the, the 90s, the likes of Dan Clow's 8-Ball or Chester Brown's Yummy Fur, things like that, like just a catch-all title to put to put your stories into. Um, and I've also put out several like one-off one stories, complete stories called like In the Aquarium um, and, and other kind of collections of short stories that have appeared that might appear in anthologies or like kind of in magazines, street press and things like that. In 2012, um, I published an anthology of Irish comic book artists. We took five artists, um, the book's called Stray Lines, it's a 64 page book. The idea was that each artist would get 12 pages to tell a story. A lot, a lot of people put out collections and anthologies of different artists' work and you know, lots of different artists with lots of short stories. And I found that a lot of them could be very bitty, that like so artists are doing like two or three page little gag stories. And I saw there was a few people, people's work in Ireland who I really liked and weren't, hadn't maybe got that self-publishing bug. And I wanted to give them a space to put a story. So, the, so like there was no theme to, the, to Stray Lines, it's just good storytelling. Last year in 2013, um, I'd worked on a graphic novel called Big Jim about Jim Larkin with a writer, Rory McConville and the O'Brien Press put that out. So that's kind of the most recent thing. The Irish comic scene has really been like gone from strength to strength in the last couple of years. There's what I really like is that there's a lot of artists out there who are, you know, like just doing their own thing. There's not they're not playing to any particular um, genre or any particular like you know preconceived idea of what a comic might be there's people like philip barrett or Maeve clancy and um, gus hughes barry hughes and um, deirdre de barra are all people who like i think are you know doing some really really nice work and um, personal work and um, yeah, just really, really encouraging to see more work like that coming out. One of the good things that we do that I really like is that myself and Phil Barrett kind of run um, the Dublin Comic Jam, which is a monthly meetup of, you know, kind of comic artists and enthusiasts. And we call it, it's basically, like we like to call it, collective comic improvisation. So um, pages are passed around, people like this, um, everybody works on 
gag strips and stories. And it's very, you know, it's, it's a kind of social, relaxed setting. People come and trade, um, trade comics. So, you know, we kind of pick each other's brains, or like someone's got a good tip on a printer, or like, you know, got a good uh, ideas on, you know, like looking for advice on projects or um, things like upcoming conventions. So, so it's like it's something we do every month. And um, you can go. We've got a blog site. Um, which is dublincomicjam.blogspot.ie and we the, the results are posted up every month and there's an email there so anyone's welcome to come along to that it's totally open and um, if you just want to come along and have a couple of drinks and have a chat that's absolutely fine if you want to come in and get involved and draw comics even better <laughs>
over five years we kind of like want to build up the studio first of all for artists so there's good supports there for them they have access to tools and access to workshops and then in three years time when it's kind of running properly then we want to develop an education program that is uh, so if you're an artist or a maker or um, whatever discipline you work in you can come in and we'll offer like a wide range where you can come in and learn how to do build your own website and learn how to use tools to make whatever you're making and uh, things like that and then also then offer that uh, using money that's generated from the studio use that money to then like build programs for community groups and work with young people and older people and kind of so it's all everyone's in working together so it's the overall aim I think. I'm Hugh McCabe and I'm a photographer and this is some of my work that you can see behind me on the wall here. Um, I started doing photography a long time ago, probably 15, 20 years ago and after having kind of experimented with a lot of different styles in photography, it's only really in the last couple of years that I've started working on a kind of a substantial project, I suppose you would say. And this project really evolved from some other interests of mine, which were being involved in music, and uh, I've played in bands uh, all through the years in Dublin as well, uh, so I always had that interest in my life too. And I basically started doing a, a photographic project which was inspired in part by the work of another artist called Hiroshi Shugamoto. And <clears throat> Hiroshi Shugamoto made a, a whole sequence of work back in the 70s or 80s, which was shot in movie theaters in New York and other places in, in the States. And basically the concept of Shugamoto's, Shugamoto's pictures was to take long exposure photographs which were the length of the film. So he would go and set up uh, his camera uh, in one of these kind of very ornate art deco movie theaters in New York and he would create a photograph which is one exposure where the shutter is open for the length of the entire movie. And they're really interesting series of photographs. Um, you don't really obviously see the film that's being shown, uh, but what you see is the film being used as a light source to illuminate the interior of the, of the building. And I became really interested in that work and then thought about how the same kind of concept might be extended to music concerts. So what I started doing was uh, going to gigs bringing my camera and, and taking photographs which again were long exposures with the concept being that each exposure was the length of a song. In the 
beginning, I wasn't particularly fussy about what bands I was shooting. I, I would have been a lot more interested in the venue. So I, I was looking for interesting places to shoot rather, rather than interesting bands. Uh, and I was really just photographing whatever gigs were happening that, that, that I was able to do. Um, however, as time went on, I kind of realized that, that mostly the photographs that I found really interesting were also the ones that resulted from, from gigs that were really interesting too. Um, and I think the first one I did that I felt really worked was the Silver Mount Zion Memorial Orchestra, I think they're called. In, they go under a number of different names in, in the button factory. And that was probably the first photograph I took that really, there was a sense in which the visual aspect of the picture somehow encapsulated something to do with the music or with the gig that was going on. After shooting gigs for, for quite a while, I, I, I decided that what I wanted to try and do was extend this concept into other sorts of performance. I, you know, I was really interested in the, in the music stuff as a way of kind of documenting some kind of communal experience on the part of the audience and the performers and so on. So it, it became as much about forms of performance and forms of events and forms of kind of participative events, I suppose, as it did about, about music as such. So I, I was interested in looking at other kinds of events or other kinds of, uh, of, of performance w which I could shoot because with, with, with music there's a certain regularity of movement associated with the performance. Whereas with something like theatre, you've got a much freer uh, palette of movement on the part of the performers and so on. So in terms of the, the photographic project as a way of, of seeing how photography can function as a way of, of capturing movement, um, theatre seemed like an interesting thing to try and tackle. Now, what turned out to be, I think, quite surprising about it was that <clears throat> the extent to which, e even though the, the movements are so fluid, usually, and, and, and not fixed to particular positions and so on, it, it was surprising the extent to which people were still visible within the pictures. Um, so in other words, there, there were some kind of cycles of regularity going on there, which allowed, uh, allowed people, actors obviously, to register in, in the photographs. I tend to think that one of the more interesting things about photography is its status as this objective kind of image recording device and therefore what that might then tell us from looking at photographs about this world outside human experience. Thank you.